we need to introduce um, two parameters. for our analysis and these are parameters that have showed up before in the, in the course so first of all we need to introduce the recruiting cost So the recruiting cost, remember, is the amount of the number of workers that have to be devoted to one vacancy in order to, you know, per unit time in order to fill the vacancy. So we have air workers per vacancies. Okay, so R is going to be our recruiting cost. The other thing that's going to matter a lot that um, we introduced before, especially when we looked at bargaining, um, but we didn't uh, introduce in the uh, previous part of the course in which we studied efficient unemployment in a matching model, is that will now allow the value of time when you're unemployed to be different from the value of time when you're employed. And this to capture the fact that what unemployed do and what employed people do is, is very different. In particular, there may be uh, either additional values from being unemployed compared to being uh, employed. So for instance, you may have more leisure time, you may have time for home production. So this would tend to make your time as an unemployed more valuable than your time as an employed. Or there could be costs. You know, you may be um, suffering while you're unemployed you know, because your life has lost meaning. You may be, you know, stressed from not having a job. You may be losing experience and, um, you know, human capital. Your skills may be depreciating while you're unemployed, so which would make time as an unemployed to be more costly than time as an employed. So we are going to introduce um, the social, because we take the perspective of the social planner, what we care about is from a social perspective, you know, what is the value of time. So we'll introduce the social value of unemployment. time compared to employed employment time. Okay, and this is going to be a uh, Z. So it's going to tell us, in a sense, uh, the amount of utility that an unemployed gets during the time that this person is unemployed compared to the utility that the person who is employed would get. Okay? And uh, Z could be positive or Z could be negative depending on whether the value of time is um, yeah, positive or, or negative. So depending on whether unemployed get more value or less value from time compared to employed workers. Okay? All right, so these are going to be uh, our two parameters that we introduce. So you remember, because we are solving a, uh, we're trying to find the efficient unemployment rate, we're so, well, here we're solving the problem of a social planner, we need to in introduce the social welfare function. Because our social planner, it's a benevolent social planner, what the social planner wants to do is to allocate you know, workers and vacancies in order to maximize social welfare. So what's social welfare going to be in this general class of model? So social welfare is going to be uh, pretty simple here. Um, so um, let's look at people who are uh, employed. So we can assume that these people produce say one unit of goods or services per unit time. Let's keep that super simple. So if these people uh, produce uh, one unit of good or services per unit time, the total amount that's um, going to be produced by uh, people who are employed is just going to be, you know, the number of people who are employed 
which is just the number of people who are in the labor force minus the number of people who are unemployed. So H minus U. This is the number of employed workers. And here we assume that people who are employed they just produce one unit of goods or service per unit time. So that's also equal to output. Okay, so that's just H minus U. Okay, super easy. However, we need to make a correction because we know that all these people uh, who are employed, actually they don't all produce things. Um, some of them, they have to be devoted to recruiting. Okay, and so uh, people who are recruiting, they are employed, they don't produce anything. So we need to net out the, the, you know, the potential output from people who are just recruiters. So we need to subtract that to get the actual number of output. So I'm going to subtract number of vacancy, <coughs> which is going to be um, V, total number of vacancy. Each vacancy requires R workers. So this is just, I'm going to subtract that. That's the number of recruiters. And the total number of employed workers minus the number of recruiters, all of this, That's the number of producers, which is also equal to output. So um, we have the first part of social welfare, which is uh, the total output produced in the economy, or if you want, the number of producers in the economy. And here, in addition, as part of welfare, we need to introduce the value uh, <coughs> produced by people who are unemployed. Because this is just the value produced by people who are employed, but unemployed people may produce value as well. Um, so, for instance, um, if there is a lot of home production, the unemployed workers will contribute to welfare. If unemployed workers enjoy a lot of um, leisure, we, you know, um, they are going to contribute to welfare. Um, conversely, if unemployed workers are um, you know, very unhappy, are going to contribute negatively uh, to welfare. But in any case, it's something that we need to take into account and we need to adjust output that's produced uh, by that. So um, to take that into account, we have that parameter Z that we've just introduced. And so we're going to add to social welfare Z times U. And this is going to represent, uh, this is going to represent the contribution to social welfare from an employed worker. So if you want, it's a little bit like the output produced by an employed worker if you want to think about home production, for instance. So we're going to allow for that. And so we can call this, uh, so this is, this is going to be our social welfare. So we can uh, simplify a little bit the social welfare function. Um, what's convenient, so we want to maximize welfare. It's exactly the same as maximizing welfare per capita. You know, dividing uh, the number, the welfare by the number of people who are in the labor force here, which will allow us to simplify a little bit. Um, so social welfare per capita, <coughs> since the population is fixed, it's exactly the same whether you maximize welfare or welfare per capita. Um, Social welfare per capita. So it's social welfare divided by H, the number of people in the labor force. So that's going to be, if we go up, we have H minus U, it's going to be 1 minus, and then we have U divided by H, that's the number of workers divided by the size of the labor force of the unemployment rate, 1 minus U. Then we have V divided by H, <coughs> that's just the vacancy rate, and we V times R plus Z, and then we have U divided by H, uh, that's going to be just the unemployment rate. So that's U. Okay? So that's our social welfare per capita. 
and then so we can write it as SW which is only a function of u it's going to be 1 minus u plus z times u minus v the vacancy rate but because it's a Beveridgean model the vacancy rate is a function of an unemployment so we have the u times r so this is our social welfare as a function of u and um, this is what uh, <coughs> the social planner is going to maximize so we know we have a benevolent social planner um, that's how we are thinking about the problem and that social planner can decide how many workers are unemployed and of course then that's going to imply how many workers are employed, how many workers that's also going to determine the number of vacancies through the beverage curve and then determine the number of uh, recruiters there's a one-to-one -one mapping between employment and employment number of recruiters, number of producers so we can think of the, go of the social planner as choosing as choosing the number of workers who are um, unemployed and we know that to find the efficient unemployment rate we have to find the unemployment rate that's going to maximize uh, social welfare okay so uh, here the efficient unemployment rate which is what we are looking for and we'll call it u star maximizes that function social welfare of u is 1 <coughs> minus 1 minus z times u minus v u times r Okay. So that's our efficient unemployment rate. It's going to maximize that. So the efficient unemployment rate is going to maximize social welfare. It's, you know, the best from a social perspective, it is the best uh, unemployment rate that can prevail on the labor market. Okay. Uh, so now the question is, what is that efficient unemployment rate? So here we have a function SW. It's a function of U only. We want to maximize it. How do we find the maximum of that function? Well, we have to we have to um, take the derivative and set that derivative to zero because the necessary condition to find the maximum of a function is that the derivative is zero. So if we have a maximum here, um, of course the maximum here is an interior maximum in the sense that you know it's not zero, it's not one, it's not on the boundaries because zero unemployment or unemployment of one would lead to um, just you know no. Um, no production whatsoever, so it wouldn't be um, desirable at all. Um, so here we're looking at an interior maximum of our function, and uh, as we've as we've seen before, the necessary condition to find that find that interior is a first order condition. The derivative has to be equal to zero. 